especially considering uh, if they get this win, the Saints will lock up a playoff spot. So I think that the Saints win this game. Um, I think it could be semi-high scoring, but I think that the Saints win it pretty convincingly. We'll say um, 34-21 Saints. And lastly, let's uh, get a preview about what we're going to be talking about tomorrow on our fantasy obviously, football show. Obviously, tomorrow we're going to go over over some of the rest of the games, and then we will uh, uh, we all kind of be digging into some of the sleepers uh, that that are possible for this week, um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll update some more on some of the injury news that's going on throughout the week. Very good. Okay, Ryan. Well, appreciate you being on with us, and you and I will do this and. Uh, a little bit less than 24 hours from now, and we'll go into our full-fledged fantasy slate about what you uh, not only what we discussed about what to look for, but we're going to go ahead and predict all the games again for our fantasy audience. So, meanwhile, Ryan, thank you very much for being on the Sports Exchange. I'll uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Lewis, anything you want to say to Ryan? Yeah, Ryan, because I won't get to say it to you beforehand, have a happy Thanksgiving, you and your wife and kids. You know, enjoy, eat some turkey, watch some football, and, you know, hopefully your all your predictions come true, but I'm sure you'll discuss that more with Scott tomorrow. But, again, yeah, have a happy Thanksgiving, man. We'll hear from you next week. All right, have Thanksgiving to you guys, too. All right, all right. thank you, Ryan. We'll talk Take to you care. tomorrow. Thank you, buddy. So what are your observations? So I want to talk a little bit about T.Y. Hilton. And I know he hasn't been, obviously hasn't been healthy all season. and But I really think that presents a world of trouble for the Colts. I understand that's a really balanced division, and we've seen the Texans struggle lately. Obviously, Deshaun Watson did win last night, or last week. I believe it was the Monday night game. But, um, no, I, I, I look, their upcoming schedule, you have games against the Titans, the Bucks, the Panthers, the Jags, and the Saints. So you have a mixed bag there. You have a couple of teams. You have a team in... In Tennessee, that's you know they're at 500. You know they're still in the midst of a playoff berth. Uh, that's a very very close division. Obviously, Jacksonville. We've spoken with David Levin extensively. Right. We'll talk with him again. But I think, you know, if if you lose a guy like T.Y. Hilton, they already out Marlon Mack, their best running back. Eric Ebron and uh, Jacoby Brissett haven't established a relationship. Well, I believe Eric before. Ebron's headed to the uh, uh, in- injured list. And there you go. So I mean, right. you lose another weapon on that team. Brissett's been fantastic all season. He's done right. more than they've expected. The fact that, that he's even won six games for them is a godsend in and of itself. But if you lose another weapon, their chances of going to the playoffs get a lot smaller. And I think if you know for Jacksonville fans, there's a, some hope of optimism there. But obviously, Jacksonville was handled pretty well by them a couple of weeks ago. Right. I just think he's a big part of that offense, especially in the wake of Ebron's inefficiencies with connecting with uh, Brissett and you know obviously Max broken hand. So. There's a lot of questions surrounding them right now. I think that's a storyline to keep track tabs on. And it'll be interesting to see how they perform against Winston's high-powered offense in um, in Tampa in a couple of weeks. But well, up ahead, uh, Damon Knight's going to be calling it. He obviously resides in a town where Thanksgiving is a big event. Mm-hmm. I know you're not from my hometown, but once upon a time, they used to have a Thanksgiving parade off of Woodward, which used to be nationally televised. Of course, they've had the Lions game. Uh, since the 1930s, and I've covered my fair share of games and gone to them. So Thanksgiving back home in Detroit to me is a big event. I know you've never experienced anything like that because they don't have anything like that in South Florida. You just get the palm trees on Thanksgiving, you get to watch them. But if you've ever been to a Thanksgiving game, it's definitely something that I think is just really, really neat stuff. It really is. So Yeah, there's a romanticization of Americana when it comes to that stuff, obviously. Right. You know, apple pie, turkey, and sweet potato, whatever you want to eat on Thanksgiving, and then you have football on in the background. It's something that is very idyllic of um, how a lot of people envision great America in, like, the 50s, 60s, 70s. And living in Florida, obviously, you don't have, like, the cool, calm weather that we have. You have the humidity and the sunshine, so you don't really get a lot of that, but it's cool to see, obviously, uh, football games played in snow. You know, in the later part of the year, especially on Thanksgiving, I just think when you're around your family, regardless of where you are, it's pretty pretty neat. So, but right. that's all I'll say in advance of Damon calling. And anything you want to add before he calls on? Well, the bottom line is, you li- being in South Florida many years ago, they had the Orange Bowl parade with the Orange Bowl on the same day. So every area is synonymous with a holiday in their own respect. Everybody can tell you that the Thanksgiving Day parade uh, with Macy's in New York is certainly a big mm-hmm. tradition. So yeah, it's you know every tradition is what it is. So with that said, I know it, Damon should be on any moment, but, uh, you know, I mean, Ryan's right. I mean, you know, you got to make sure that uh, 
be prepared to pick these fantasy games early because these games sneak up really quick. With that said, Damon Knight is here on the Sports Exchange. And Damon, uh, welcome back to the program. Uh, it's going good. It's going good, Scoop. How are you guys doing? Uh, doing great. Uh, so anyways, uh, what's on Damon Knight's play tonight? see the Red Wings uh, taking a shot at Mike Babcock at, down the line? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Uh, maybe maybe it's like probably his last year they, they weren't really happy with the results and just decided, hey, let's make a change. But like, you know, he got out of town because the Toronto Maple Leafs were like his dream job growing, uh, growing up because he is Canadian and it does make sense. But uh, he did a lot for us. You know, he took, it to, took us to two Stanley Cups in uh, 08 and 09 against Pittsburgh. Right, winning one of those. And winning one of those. Well, I guess we lost Damon. We'll probably have him back in a moment, but there we go. Now, now we have him back. All right, Damon, go ahead. Uh, Wi Fi failure. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, I was, yeah, back to what I was saying. Yes. Uh, so, Babcock, he on his last year, a couple years here, uh, people weren't really happy with the results, but he did do a lot in his time that he was here. He took us to two Stanley Cups back to back. You know, against Pittsburgh, we won one, we lost one, but you know that that's pretty good, and we haven't been there since uh, since nine, so it's been ten years. You know, it's going to be eleven, and so uh, you know, it, it's a very tough league. You know, championships don't come easy, or appearances for that matter don't. So, you know, uh, he's a very good coach, and he'll definitely find a job. You no, know, right now he's being paid enough money to stay away, so I think yes. Mike can go ahead and pick his. Uh, Jobs when yeah. the time does come. Toronto's a tough job, though. When you oh, have yeah. when you haven't been to a Stanley Cup in, uh, since the late 1960s, and they thought, yes. you know, he was a, their answer to it. Uh, you're talking about an organization with Toronto that's definitely desperate, without a doubt. So, yes. to me, that yes. boss that that Toronto job would be like for yeah. many years the Red Sox and the Cubbies. When you're desperate oh, in those yeah. markets, those seats get hotter much mm -hmm. much quicker. Yes, and uh, you know. Uh, Valentine, the former uh, Red Sox coach, he was out of there within at least one year, and it's uh, yeah, it's a crazy, it's a crazy uh, organization to be a part of, like you just said, you know, Boston, the Yankees, or just Toronto, because you're in Canada, and they expect to win, and they haven't won, like you said, in a very long time, so I don't, I don't blame them, but, you know, they, they got so much talent, it's just, it's weird that they're not putting it together, so, you know, yeah. but uh, Rome, Rome wasn't built one day, so... Damon, yeah, it's true. I mean, a lot of a lot of those franchises are so steeped in tradition and history yeah. that it's yeah. unfortunately the adverse of that is that the coaches are on just such a short leash. Yeah. I, I, you want to reference Valentine? Red Sox won sixty nine games that year after you know a, a collapse in the playoffs uh, before the playoffs in September of twenty eleven, and you know that was a good. But with the Bruin or with um Toronto, or I'm sorry, I'm talking about the Red Wings. You know, I haven't been to the Stanley Cup in a decade. They have yep. so many Stanley Cups, they just set a right. standard for winning. In mean, the yes. same way the Yankees did. The Yankees didn't go to a World Series this decade for the first time since the 1910s. When you, the, the point yep. is, there's a universality to that, that regardless of what sport you play, when you win, you want it, you want more of it. You right. want it every year. It's a bad year if you don't go to the playoffs. It's a bad year if you don't take yep. home the hardware. In this case, the Stanley Cup. You know, to, not, to have a decade in Detroit, yep. you know, where you're not getting a major sports championship, and I don't believe they have in this past decade, then it's hard, right? Uh, I mean, not, yeah, that's my knowledge, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so. Detroit went to two World Series. They didn't win any of them. Obviously, yes. the 2010s yeah. were a bit of a of a question mark era for the Red Wings. I know they had some playoff appearances, but they didn't right. go anywhere. Babcock's right. still not there. Yes. But I believe we discussed this last week, and I want to ask you guys again, because, you know, 
over time, opinions can change on a lot of things, regardless of whether it's sports or not. But, Scott, in your eyes, do you think Babcock does have a chance of going back there, and do you think it's more just an emotional appeal rather than we want to try to build a winner again? Yeah, you know what? That's a great question, okay? My gut feeling, and it's only a gut feeling, is, Damon, that the guy can afford to sit out a year or two. When the Red Wings start to turn the corner, I wouldn't be surprised to see them take a stab at him again, knowing full well that if he ever goes back there again – you know, he yeah. has the credence there anyhow. So, yeah, why not? He's a proven winner. And, again, you said it yourself, and, yeah. I'll, and I'll back off with what Lewis said. When you're in an organization that's won a lot, the desperation factor being what it is isn't as under the microscope as normally as, as it would yeah. be. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you're in an organization that won 20, 30, 40 years, then that's another animal. But I, I yeah. think there is a chance – but you don't bring him in after Blashell. I mean, well, although you never know, maybe, because, you know, he took a rebuilding Toronto team. But the question really comes down to yep. is how much patience will Steve Eiserman have with Blashell, who, by the way, is on an expiring contract, and who yes. you bring in. And then when Babcock knows he's collecting X amount of dollars anyways, that he's free, that's where yep. there's an interesting line that you have to draw in the sand. Good question by you, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. I yes. mean, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that was a really good question. Yes. Now, yeah. Damon, we've seen in other sports where coaches can, you know, say they, they either get fired or they just decide they're not going to come back to the respective organization that they were coaching with. Yeah. We've seen a lot of managers come back and they have a change of thought. They're exposed to different ideas. You know, they meet new people yeah. who, again, expose them to different things and ways of viewing the game through a different lens. Yes. Do you think this could happen with Babcock? I don't know how, you know, about the different coaching styles in uh, hockey, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you think yeah, time off not? can bode well for guys like that? Yeah, yeah, why not? You know, why not come back? You know, I mean, uh, we're Detroit. We're all about winning. We're all about uh, building a culture of winning and, and bringing that mentality in every single day. You know, you hear it in press conferences with the players, that's always in the forefront of their mind. And so it's, it's almost guaranteed, you know, guaranteed success, but you got to work for it. That's the thing. And so when you say, like, you know, Steve Eiserman puts, you know, Blashell on short leash, he is, because, one, he's, his reputation's on the line. We're so used to seeing him as, like, the greatest Detroit player of all time when you think Red Wings, and, his, you know, that's on the line as far as, like, him being a GM and what he means to us. And so, second, it's his job. Like, he has to make us better. Like, that, that that's the primary focus for him. And so... You know, it all depends. There's so many other aspects as far as, like, where we're at, who we need, wh- where do we need to get to, and how we're going to do it. That You know, there's so many dynamics to it. But, uh, but, but yeah, you know, I think of John Gruden when he, when he coached the Raiders. Now he's back, you know, and so why not? History repeats itself. So, you know. Okay, let's go on to uh, Thanksgiving back in Detroit. And yep. that, and the Lions are taking on the Bears. They could be down to their third quarterback. What are your feelings about the uh, the Lions' uh, tough loss to the Washington yes. Redskins? Yeah, that that was terrible. Uh, you know, thank God I didn't watch the game because I I probably would have threw something at the TV. <laughs> you know, just it, it, you can't lose to the Washington Redskins. I'm sorry, but like I, I know we're a bad team, but we're not that bad. You know, what I mean, well, apparently we are, but you, you know, in my eyes, we aren't. And so. Uh, you know, back to the Thanksgiving with a third string quarterback. I like our chances with Driscoll if it's not Stafford, uh, but I'm not going to put all my uh, all my eggs in one basket. You know, they could mess it up. You know, and I'm expecting that. So, but I, I kind of do want them to win just to kind of put salt to the wound and kind of just you know. I don't think it erases that bleeding. Washington defeat, which I thought was bad. And I watched it; I just couldn't believe it. But, uh, but yeah. I, to lose to the Redskins is despicable. It really is. Yeah, and I just I, I really like. I want them to finish in the top ten when it comes to the draft. I want to get a great player. I want to start like building towards our needs and actually drafting well. That's one thing the Wings are good at is drafting and I kind of want to get to the same formula that they're at with drafting and we're not doing that you know I mean like probably the last great player that we drafted was I'd say Matthew Stafford you know so well uh, Kenny Galladay wasn't bad either Kenny Galladay is pretty good yeah he's getting there 
but the you know. but the uh, but the great draft.